Hey guys, Ford Boss here. I got one for you. Check this out. 2021 and at 450, 7.3 liter Godzilla. So a couple guys in the shop are looking at it or whatever, and you know they kind of stethoscope trying to figure out where this loud knocking is coming from. Yet it doesn't really feel like it's misfiring that bad. You can feel a little bit of a misfire, but it ain't that bad. So they get up under the vehicle, they're listening to the pan, they're listening to everywhere, front cover, they come up here, Valkyrie's like, man, it sounds like it's up here. And I was like, because it is up there. Go to that passenger side and uh, start looking at those, pull the valve cover off and start looking at those, those rockers. Watch this. You can take a magnet to that push rod that's underneath it and you can move that push rod up and down like this. The lifter has collapsed and that cylinder is low on compression. Yep. So, at this point, we gotta try to figure out do they want us to pull the head and lifter, push rod, rocker, or what do they want us to do? Are they gonna low time and service this engine and uh, have us put a new engine in it? And before I got away, I caught something out of the corner of my eye. I'm looking at it right now. See if you can notice it. I'll give you a second. Something that don't look like it's supposed to be the way it is. Look down there in that corner. See all that fluid down there? How dark and... Yeah, that's oil. I stuck my finger down in there and it's got dye in it. Like they had dye from the oil in the factory. I come over here, I'm looking around the engine and stuff, and the technician that's working on it, he said, I think it's coming from that valve cover over there, but I haven't really looked at it too much. And I said, no, it's not. Look at this PCV set up. The whole housing loose. The, house, the PCV that snaps into the valve cover is loose. It's wobbling around inside its spot, and then the hose that connects to the PCV is wobbling around all the spot. Rub your hand underneath it, like underneath this collar right here, and all that fresh oil just gobbed up with dye. Yeah. And so, got a couple issues going on here. Probably gonna have to get an updated valve cover for this side. I'm gonna have to get a PCV tube, uh, PCV. And then this customer said at about, you know, 35, 40 mile an hour, if I hit a bump, front end starts shaking. Well, it's that death wobble coming back all over again. So we're going to have to see if the steering stabilizer is going to fix it or if there's something wrong with the front end. I don't know. And then he said every once in a while you would be driving, you get this loud vibration from inside underneath the dash. <laughs> For about 10 seconds, and it just goes away. And he said it's not the blower. It doesn't change with blower speed or any of the HVAC stuff. It just randomly does it. So it could be air getting in somewhere or the cowl fluttering up here. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just figured I'd share that with you guys because these are new and you guys keep asking me, well, what problems have you seen? You can't keep telling us that there's no problems because I love this setup. It's a really good setup. It's a very simple setup. Even with this, this is nothing to fix. It's set up just like an LS engine, same type of design. Really easy to take apart, really easy to put lifters and stuff in it. No problem at all. Won't be an issue at all. But it is what it is. I figured I'd share that with you guys. You know what? I apologize. This is not a 21. This is a 20. And there's lots of compression on cylinder 2. So this deal here is a uh, 2021 Lincoln Aviator. And this is a uh, magazine car. Uh, they take these vehicles straight from the manufacturer. They will never see the public. Uh, they only go to the manufacturer for reviews. They do full-blown reviews on them, write, you know, like article write-ups on them and stuff like that. And every once in a while, Ford will send these over to the dealership and say, hey, get that vehicle over to the Ford dealer. You got a bunch of modules out of date. Go let them update all your modules. Well, we've been getting quite a bit of these lately because there's a lot of reviews going on. And I've probably done half a dozen of them already with complete success. Hours and hours tied up into these things updating modules because they are just atrocious with the FDRS system. Uh, this morning I come to work and the service rider's like, hey, yeah, I got one of your uh, your special update vehicles coming in. You have the most experience doing them, so I figured I'd give the vehicle to you. And uh, it's an expensive vehicle, man. Such a nice vehicle. 3.0 twin turbo HPIV. So it's a 
the hybrid 3.0 liter twin, twin turbo, super nice ride. And they said uh, one of the uh, Ford department guys, like engineer guys or something, came out to actually program the modules in here to kind of see exactly what you guys are talking about with all the problems you're running into. And I think the gentleman forgot to turn over the air updates through the system. They got OTA updates. And you got to turn that stuff off when you do module programming because you could be in the middle of programming a module and the vehicle connected to Wi-Fi and then all of a sudden an update is posted to be put into the vehicle while you're already programming the vehicle and it'll smoke the module. You got to turn all that stuff off. That's just that you you have to you have to know that about these vehicles and I'm not even an engineer. I'm not talking bad about the guy. This stuff happens. Maybe he forgot to do it. Maybe I, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is, but you know obviously they're trying to do their job and if something happens like this they don't have parts available they don't have access to a parts department it's got to go to the local Ford dealer which I am the local Ford dealer here and it's my job to now pick up where everything left off and get the problem fixed I was able to rake the fuse box under the hood and uh, pull fuse by fuse by fuse for every single module and try to wake modules back up so I got the IPC back up the dashes back online the radio now turns on and off like it didn't do before. Um, the engine, PCM and everything is activating under the hood properly whenever you take away power and give it back. You can tell things are functioning. The ABS module is running itself checks while it sits here. Um, the BCM is down. So none of the lights will work. The accent lights for the doors and stuff won't work. Nothing inside will completely turn on to give you functionality of the vehicle. Unfortunately, um, the vehicle is now stuck in my stall because while waking all the modules back up it has applied the rear electronic parking brakes in order for me to take the electronic parking brakes back out I would have to disconnect the connectors back there reverse polarity the power and ground and manually apply elect uh, I mean current to them to get them to detract so I can move the vehicle um, and it's actually stuck in neutral as well because I'm pretty sure on these, when you hit the brake, it releases some kind of uh, latching mechanism. So you can actually put it back in regular mode. I'll show you. So if you ever run into a problem where you have to tow one of these because it's having issues, um, see on the dash right here, it's none of that would ever come on before, now it does. Park not available, apply park, park brake before exiting. So I get the doors and everything online. There's a slot right here in the front. You apply the parking brake, you hold the regular brake, and when you do that, you pop or you, you go ahead and pop this little cover off before you start anything, then apply the parking brake, hold your regular brake, and as you're holding your regular brake, you take a screwdriver and you put down on the top of this slot and you shift it back into manual neutral and it disengages the transmission. And then when you're done, uh Hopefully when you did all this, you disconnected the battery, towed the vehicle to where you need to go. When you tow the vehicle to where you need to go and you get it down, uh, if you get it in your stall, you're going to need to hook the battery back up, repress the brake pedal, make sure the electronic parking brake is, is uh, set, and then you're going to have to shift this back up. Well, it won't shift back up. It's stuck where it's at right now. Ah, uh, yeah. So I need to get all the modules back online, get the BCM in, get it programmed, get the, both keys programmed to the BCM, and then get this out of uh, neutral mode and get the rear parking brakes released in order to get this vehicle back online. Yeah, just that simple Wi-Fi over-the-air update while trying to, to program with a laptop bricked the BCM. Every the Your fuse panel inside your aviator is right here and it has all the powers and grounds that it needs it's just not functioning at all so this fuse box smart junction box needs to be replaced it's it's no good anymore it's it's done yep joy 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 so this is going to be down here for right now until I can get it out. This is the one I showed you guys the other day that's got spark plugs broke off in the cylinder head because of coolant intrusion. 
So this is literally how my day has been so far. Anyway, y'all have a great day.